me please i'm begging the name of god to real law room always think about outcome not just action i did this then what nobody's going to my read your autobiography in a cv okay don't put it on the cv nobody's gonna beat you honestly there is no reason on god's green earth please let's just talk about the subject nobody needs to know you are engaged in a civil partnership you are in a situationship you don't come and put number 10 make way make way road i hope this makes sense <laughs> In this video, I'm going to be telling you how to write a CV for the UK job market in 2023 and going forward. Basically, how to format your CV and how to ensure you have the right information on your CV in order to help you land a job. I'm going to be covering CV size, CV format, um, information put on your CV, your personal information, your work experience, your education, your skills, your references section and other sections. So make sure to watch to the end of this video so you don't miss out on anything. Also, in this video, I'm going to be linking a free CV template which you can use as a base to start building your own CV. Link in the description box below. Also, I have included a free CV checklist. So basically things to tick off when you create your CV to ensure that it is up to standard and it is good to go once again this is all free link in the description box below now let's get right into it okay so i have done several cv videos on my channel but i felt like it's time for an upgrade because now i am privileged to be in a position where i am on the other end of the table so now i'm the one reviewing cvs i'm the one interviewing people and hiring in this year alone i have reviewed hundreds and hundreds of cvs and i keep seeing common mistakes that i'm like we should be past this by now. We should be past this level. Like we should all stop making these mistakes. And that's why I decided to put this video together. Now, the very first thing is CV format. How should your CV be formatted? One, it should be easy to read. Whenever you create your CV, first thing you should do, look at the CV. Can you quickly glance through it? Is it easy for the eyes to just skim through? Because trust me, nobody's reading your CV line by line. Everybody just scans through and picks out relevant information. Okay. So is it easy to read? Is it legible what is your font size is the font size good enough ideally it should not be less than font size 12 anything less than font size 12 is difficult for the eyes to read also formatting i know that sometimes um, some people tend to put columns like you have two columns on one page that might be fine but uh, what i've noticed over time is that it's a bit difficult to you know read information like that because it's just everywhere it's better to just keep it like one column and then you read through the cv that's my personal opinion but the point is anything that makes it easy for the person reading your CV to just can't do it. Another thing I want to say is bright colors. There is no need for bright colors in your CV. I don't know why you make your CV bright orange, bright neon green, like all of those things are unnecessary. But of course, nothing is like a hard and fast rule. Depending on the industry you're applying for, you're working in, you might be able to do some creative things with your CV. So for example, if you're working in fashion, makeup, stuff like that, you might be creative with your CV because you're working in the creative industry. But if you're not working in the creative industry, industry please keep it plain and simple okay simple colors black and white at most dark blue and if you must if you must put color use dark colors that are easy to read on a white background you get me another important thing is to ensure you use good fonts now not just the font size the type of font you use it should be easy for the eyes to read honestly i just say stick to times new roman times new roman is like universally acceptable and it's easy for the eyes to read that font okay next thing we're moving to the size of the cv how big or how long should your CVB. Now, this depends on how many years of experience you have and the amount of inf information you want to feed into the CV. If you have between zero to two years of experience, honestly, there is no reason on God's green earth why your CV should be longer than one page. Like, there's nothing you should write that should be longer than one page because you have less than two years experience. Now, if you have between two to five years or two to actually three to ten years experience, that is less than a decade, you can condense it into two pages at most. I said what at most, it should not be more than that. Nobody's going to want to read your autobiography in a CV, okay? Just keep it short and simple. Put the things that are most important and most relevant to that role. If you're a researcher, someone that's written lots of research papers, or you have more than 10 years experience, like more than a decade, then in that instance, you can push it a bit to three pages, but honestly, it should not be more than three pages. That should be the ideal size for your CV. Nobody has that time. Also, something I need to say here is that a longer CV doesn't necessarily mean better. I see people that maybe because you're struggling to fill up your CV with information, you start adding things that are not relevant and it doesn't even help you because all those irrelevant things is only going to weaken your stance as a good candidate. So you're not trying to fill that CV and make it long. Just make it concise, straight to the point and full of relevant information and key skills that make you the ideal candidate.
So now I'll be talking about personal information, which is the first thing that comes up on your CV. The very first thing you should not do is please do not put a picture. Okay, do not put a picture on your CV. I can't overemphasize this. Do not. It's not necessary. And why is that? The UK is all about like data protection and also like no discrimination, right? When you put this information, you make it difficult because you now introduce bias to the hiring process. So remove your picture. There is no reason why your picture should be on your CV. Remove it. Another thing is nobody needs to know your marital status. Nobody needs to know you are engaged in a civil partnership. You are in a situationship. Nobody needs to know that. Remove it. Nobody needs to know your data of birth honestly there's no point for you to put that once again it introduces bias when someone is reviewing your cv especially for people coming from africa like nigerians i can speak for nigerians because i've seen us do this a lot nobody needs to know your state of origin when you're applying for jobs in the uk like that doesn't count remove it okay the only information that you need to put in your personal information bit is your name okay your email address your phone number, maybe a link to your LinkedIn if your LinkedIn is up to date or a link to your portfolio. Basically, that's it. And then your house address. And your house address, nobody's saying you should put your full address. Don't come and put number 10, make way, make way road. Mm -mm. You should just put, you can just put the postcode or you can even just put the city. So for example, I could just put like um, Hatfield. That's it. You don't have to give all those details about yourself on the cv just keep it short and simple but of course there are instances where they may say oh so and so um, person is preferred maybe someone who is a native of so and so place is preferred if there's an information that will make you like an ideal candidate for a role you can add it so if they say preferably a Ghanaian who can speak so and so language then you can write Ghanaian like there do you understand because it helps you but ideally generally don't add this information the information you need is what i've stated already in your personal information section the section that comes next after your personal information is your profile or professional summary like some people will call it so basically what is this section It's usually between two to three line sentences or two to three lines that is a snapshot of who you are it's called what summary what do you do in a summary you summarize you make it what concise what that means is if i don't read your cv and i just read that summary can I get an idea of who you are, the skills you have, and what experience you can bring to the table? That's basically what you should be in your what you should put in your professional summary is a snapshot, a quick snapshot of who you are if I don't read your CV. Also, something to say here is please avoid using all those generic terms in your professional summary. All these like motivated, insightful, ambitious, team player, all those words that are not necessary. Describe yourself with words that are more unique to you if you get what i mean don't just use like generic terms when you're writing that bit also in that page just in that summary just add a quick snapshot of the skills you have that the key skills that are necessary for that role and then also add like how many years experience you have if you have that and in what industry now i'm going to touch on something there's something i'm supposed to mention here but i'll touch on it in the next bit which is your skills section so right after your professional summary ideally you should have a skill section so this skill section not every cv must have it if you have skills that are relevant to the job you're applying for i would advise that you put a skill section just after your professional summary just highlight it there before you go into the rest of the cv now in this skill session this is where you want to really pick out the key skills that you've listed in the job role so one thing i want you to take away from this video if you don't take away anything at all is keyword research keyword research what is it basically is looking at the job that you're trying to apply for before you start working on your cv pick out all the skills they listed look through what the duties on the role is they list usually like write the skills in between the job description sometimes they may highlight the skills separately just list out all of the skills and put it on a document then you start working on your cv you start feeding in those skills is there any skill there that you have you put it in your cv now in this your skills section you want to highlight the skills that they are looking for that you have and then also in your professional summary when you're writing make sure to add some of the skills that they actually need for the role in that professional summary if you have it this is very 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 important when people are looking at your cv they're just came in for quick information if they say they want someone who is good in tableau data processing stuff like that just put proficient in tableau um a, in your summary you can put like a data analyst professional with experience in tableau kini 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 that's where you can put your professional summary and then in your skills section you highlight all of these skills that they have mentioned that they are looking for this is very important and also it helps with the applicant's tracking system i don't know if you've ever applied for a job where you submit your cv and then like within like four hours they already rejected you in short some people is instantly once you <laughs> once you apply within the hour they rejected you what happens in those, those kind of scenarios is that it is an applicant's tracking system 
system that is looking at the CD. So basically not a human being. And what that system does, basically what it does is, okay, they tell you the keywords that they're looking for, and then it will not search your CD looking for it. If it doesn't find it, or if it doesn't find as many relevant skills, it will just cancel you as an applicant. Like you're just thrown away from the pool and a human being has not even seen your CV. So it's very, very important that you do keyword research for your skill section and for the entirety of your CV. Another thing I think I should mention here is that with your skill section, I'm not saying you should put every single skill that you know. Mm -mm. Put the skills that are relevant or the skills you think that will be worth mentioning that might help you with the job. Not every single skill you have is a relevant skill for a job you're applying for. Okay, now the next section is your education or your experience. But here's the rule of thumb. If you're just graduating uni, you want to put your education section first. But if you have ample experience, your experience should come first and then your education should be further down on your CV, okay? So now let's tackle your education bit first. If you're filling in your education bit, basically what should be there is your course of study, university, year graduated and then key module so if there's a course you did that is very relevant maybe you're applying for a job in marketing and you took a module on advertising and marketing in traditional media or something like that you should highlight that there if your dissertation was maybe studying how people respond to marketing trends kini kini that's relevant to the role you put dissertation you put the topic there that's what you should put on that your education and then also your grade so if you graduate with a distinction put it something i generally just say is if you know your grade is not good enough just leave it don't put it on the cv nobody's gonna beat you don't put it on the cv so people that always want to put your grade i generally people that have like a distinction or a merit or like you know good grades if you know your grade is like a pass or you're not so proud of your grade don't stress take it out but if you know putting your grade is going to help you like if you have a distinction you have you know something scholarships all of that Put that there if you don't have that just leave it okay another thing to mention here is depending on where you studied because you know different um, countries have different education system maybe the way you're graded in your country is not the same type of grading system used in the UK when you're writing your grades from your previous from your country or from wherever you study and it's not the same with the UK make sure you write equivalent to so if you study so and so here and you go like uh, a first class or whatever I don't know you just write equivalent to whatever it is equivalent to in the UK um, education system. Now moving to the cocoa of the matter, which is experience, work experience. How should you put in your work experience? Basically role, where and date. So for example, marketing analyst, I'll put the name of the company, maybe Goldman Sachs, date started and ended. So I can put 2018 to 2019. That's what I'll put there. Then under the roles and duties or whatever I'm going to list under that job, I'm going to put key achievements i'm not just going to list out my job description i'm not just going to list out or oh, log data into the system or oh, analyze this no what you should do with that bit is write the outcome of what you did see what i mean if your work was to handle customer service queries you should not write on your cv handle customer service queries no what you should say is resolved customers issues that led to a kini kini satisfaction or retention or de-escalated issues that could have caused the company so and so and so and so and so and so do you understand? So don't just write what you did. Write what you did, then the outcome. What is the outcome of those tasks that you were doing every day? What were the outcomes of those things? And then remember what I said about what? Keyword research. Now, when you've done the keyword research for the job, like in this your task or your achievements under each job, you want to ensure you are infusing keywords from what they're looking for, okay? If they said something about Microsoft Office, maybe you put in your this thing, handled a lot of Microsoft Office queries, whatever, whatever, ensure you are infusing using keywords everywhere like there should be keywords all over your cv as long as you have that experience i hope this makes sense the next section is volunteering or leadership roles or leadership experience don't undermine volunteering experience especially if you don't have a lot of like ample work experience you can literally list out your voluntary role and just list out what you did like the outcome of your actions remember that's why i say always think about outcome not just action i did this then what you did this then what happened you did this and this happened like always think of outcome outcome when you're writing things under like your role so even for your volunteering experience also 
also write about the outcome of the steps you took or the initiatives or the ideas you brought about to the team make sure you put the outcome of that another thing leadership maybe you served in your student union you're a secretary at a fellowship or something in school this is where you can list all of that there if you received awards as well you could put your awards under your leadership experience because yeah if you're getting an award you're a good leader that's me anyway but yeah you can list that there next section is your references ideally i would say just take out references like you don't even need to put it because in the uk first of all data protection is a big deal so you shouldn't be putting people's information on your cv um that you're going to be sending to like tens and thousands of applications right so you don't need to put people's information their phone number their email all of that it's not necessary people will say just write references available on request or that's what i even used to say before right like write references available on request but right now i'm just like take it out if people need references from you they're going to ask you and that will be at the point of the interview like it just takes up space like it's not necessary just leave the references beat out except honestly there's no case leave the references beat out but if you must write it you can just put references then put references available upon request okay um the other bit which i don't think are so serious or so like add so much is like <laughs> you can talk about your hobbies if the hobbies you have are like relevant or could give you an edge you can add it but if you don't have space for hobbies honestly just leave it except if that hobby is going to give you like some leverage to get in the job then you can find a way to add your hobbies and your interests okay so lastly i'm going to talk about my best tips in general for cv writing the very first thing is when you're done writing your cv please i'm begging the name of god through your law room proofread your cv proofread this pay for grammarly proofread your cv or give someone else to proofread like there's no reason for you to be having spelling and typo errors it just shows that you're not paying attention to detail and that's like the first thing you need to be able to pay attention to detail okay the other thing i want to say is when you're saving your cv like you finish working on your cv you want to export it i beg in the name of god do not save it as doc, docs x docs dot one dot save dot uh -uh. just use it as your name save it as your name so if you export it then rename it put chidera peter cv put your name cv please it's very please i don't even know what to say just please the next thing i would say is format of saving your cv ideally just save it as a pdf file why pdf pdf locks in the formatting so meaning if i open it on my laptop it's still gonna stay in the same format because you might be using a microsoft word 2008 to work on your cv someone is using a microsoft word 2010 or 2015 when i open your microsoft word cv on my own laptop the formatting may scatter like your whole cv may just be disorganized and i won't read it i'm just gonna move to the next one so ideally just make it a pdf file except if the job says oh submit it as a doc file then you submit it as a doc file because that was requested for ideally pdf so you lock in your formatting you lock in your fonts you lock in everything and it just looks neat and tidy another just best tip that i want to throw in here is when you're applying for a role where you have to send an email please let's just talk about the subject the subject of the email Put the role you're applying for and your name. So see what I mean. Advertising analyst dash Chidera Peters. That's what I'll put. So I'm going to put application for advertising analyst dash Chidera Peters. Put it like that. Your name should be in the title and what you're applying for in the subject of the email. And please do not send a blank email. This is just another best tip. Write something in the email. Even if it's just three sentences or two sentences. Write something in the body of the email. Another important tip here is when you're listing out your work role or your job, when you're listing out your work experience or your education, make sure to put it in chronological order. What, the, the, what that means is that your most recent experience or education comes first and then further down. So 2023, 2022, 2022. 19 20 like that so most recent first and then all the way back to as many years as you have behind you another important thing i just want to say here is that there's no such thing as the perfect cv okay it's just tailoring your cv as best as you can to the job role ensuring that it is legible it is easy to read and it is like it is relevant basically so there's no such thing as a perfect cv just try and do your best to ensure that your cv looks good and it contains all the relevant information that will make you an ideal candidate now we have come to the end of this video remember i said there's a free cv checklist for you to tick off and just be sure you've done your cv the right way um link in the description box below is absolutely free to download also i have linked a free cv template for you to use or to use like as a foundation to build yours or a sample to build yours link in the description box below if you found this video helpful please do not forget to give it a thumbs up so you can reach more people and sure to also leave a comment as this helps my channel and it helps my content reach more more people till next time guys thank you so much for watching have a lovely lovely day day and bye bye <laughs>